Hey, this is Drinant, and let's get right into it. We're going to start a new game. Now, the Kestrel is the, the ship that you start out with, but honestly, I'd like to play the Taurus myself. I played EVE Online for about five years, and I played the Galente Federation, and I really loved drones, and I feel like they were really powerful. So, I think I'm going to play the Taurus this, this round, and see if we can beat the game with them. Let's name our our crew. Uh, the pilot is going to be Drinant, obviously. Let's rename my right hand man. This is going to be Jiggly Bits because I think it's a funny name. Not rename, accept. And our human will be named Scotty. Scotty will be our engines pilot, or uh, this guy right here. Um, so look. Looks like everything is good to go. Um, I'm going to go normal mode this time because I like a little bit of a challenge. And I tried easy and it seemed a little bit too simple. So let's get right into it. Now, uh, I think I'm going to read out each of these text boxes because I really think this game did really well. It's simple and I love the, the role playing aspect to it. So let's get right into it. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip. Nebulous. Passing through a nebula will allow you to temporarily slow down the fleet advancement, but they contain their own unique dangers. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll describe what this is later, this little tip here. Uh, to me, it was a, a bit fuzzy at, at, as to what that meant when I first started, but I'll describe and uh, go over what that means a little later on. So let's continue. Um, now as we can see, let's just go over the UI real quick. We have the hull. This is how much uh, damage your, your your hull can take before you you die. This is your scrap. It, it's basically the currency in this game. How much money you have and use that to purchase uh, ammo, new weapons, new crew members. Shields. This is the level of shielding you have. And each level of shielding um, allows you to block a certain amount of attacks, depending on what they are, uh, usually lasers and things of that sort. This is your ammo. You have um, fuel. Uh, one fuel is taken up per uh, per jump from system to system. That usually doesn't run out that, that quickly. Um, I think they could have done something else with this. It just seems like a waste of a, a current or uh, an ammunition, but nevertheless it's there. Uh, missiles, this is also an, an ammunition, and drones. Every time you use a drone, deploy a drone to attack, he gets depleted once the fight is over. Um, this is your evade chance. Obviously very good if you've played any RPG, MMORPG, anything like that. Your evade chance allows you to evade attacks. Oxygen, this is a number describing the, the amount of oxygen within the, whole, within the ship itself. Once it goes down to zero, uh, your crew members start dying because unless they are a certain race, uh, which is the, uh, the rock type. And I'll describe that later. I'll go over that later if we happen to go come across any of those um, because they don't breathe there. Everyone else will start suffocating. Uh, now this is a list of your, your crew members and what they are specializing in. Now to get your crew members specialized, they have to be working that area. So Jigglybits, I am going to uh, work him in the missiles room. And Scotty, I'm going to work him in the shields room. Um, this is a setup that I've found to be most effective. Uh, if you have someone in the rooms, um, they seem to give a bonus as to uh, as being said by here. Uh, manning reduces the recharge time, and since this is manned, uh, my weapons will be the recharge recharge time between each volley is reduced. Uh, the shield, if I man it. Uh, increases the shield recharge speed, which is obviously good because it allows me to uh, take more hits. And it uh, the ship requires a pilot to man to uh, to evade in combat or to jump to another system. So those are the three requirements that I feel the most necessary. Once you get more crew members, you can divvy them up between each of the other uh, systems, and they each have their bonus. Um, if you and I'll go over those later as we uh, as we as we use them. And these, so we'll move on to these web your weapons. Your weapons are down here, and these are your drones. 
Um, you can either hotkey them or press them. I'll go over how to use them a little later on and we'll work with that. <laughs> these are all of your subsystems and your, these are your systems right here. This is your shields, your engines, your oxygen, your med bay, and your weapons. This is how much energy uh, you, need, you have at the moment is your reactor and you can only have the amount leveled as the the reactor that you have. I'll go over a little bit more of that later when we when we get more into it. And uh, now that was a bit of an introduction. Um, I said I didn't want to uh, have these these videos go longer than five minutes, so I'm going to cut part one off here, and we will carry the carry on and jump to the next system and begin our journey in the next episode.